We're going to cover these four examples of cases that you might see involving the spine or spinal cord. So myelogram, lumbar puncture, facet injection, and then discogram. So for myelograms, we're going to use fluoroscopy. We're going to inject a water soluble contrast, evaluating the spinal cord, nerve roots, and the meninges. Um, it can be useful for assessing disc abnormalities in patients who can't undergo an MRI. Um, if there's a lesion present, um, that the lesion may be protruding into the canal. The most common uh, reason for myelogram is this HNP, so herniated nucleus propulsus, or the herniated disc. Um, so that's one thing I would definitely put down for myelogram. It might also show spinal stenosis or narrowing. Contraindications uh, A would be allergy to contrast medium or say lidocaine. If there's increased cranial intracranial pressure, um, if the pressure is elevated, then kind of tapping off the subarachnoid space with the needle may cause severe complications. Um, inflammation of the arachnoid membrane can cause severity of that. Um, if there's blood in the CSF, then there's potentially an irritation already present in the spinal canal. And then if they've had a recent lumbar puncture within two weeks, then um, we shouldn't be doing um, any of these procedures. So they need to hold off. So myelogram exam prep. So you're gonna grab the myelogram tray. It looks like the exact same tray on the outside as the arthrogram tray, it just says myelogram on the top. Um, you want water contrast, um, water soluble contrast. Ours always used to say ice of you and it had the letter M on it. And certain strengths were for lumbar and certain strengths were for cervical. So make sure you're checking protocols on that. It's always gonna be water soluble. Um, in our past experience, the ice of you 300 always went to the cervical. I was taught the higher strength goes higher up in the spine. And the lumbar, we always use 200, but always go with your department protocol. And then the rest is really um, sort of the same as any of your special procedures. You're gonna have sterile gloves. Um, you're gonna remove your lead curtain. You might want a skin marker and the hemostat, that metal clamp, so they can locate their area of the spine. And then patient prep, you're always gonna have previous images reviewed by the radiologist, patient history, allergies. Current medications, are they on blood thinners? And you guys know this already, consent form, timeout form. If there's a CT to follow, make sure that CT knows what time you're doing it and what time they're available and have a stretcher ready to put the patient on and slide them over and get them to CT right after. You can't walk them over. Um, positioning for lumbar and cervical myelograms. Lumbar myelogram, um, it's either left lateral or where they're like tucked into that fetal position. So chin to chest, knees to chest, um, or prone. So place a couple pillows underneath their belly and lay them prone. It's gonna, flexing the spine opens the interspinous space. The puncture site for lumbar is L3, L4, and that is a space you need to know. Cervical myelogram is sometimes called a cisternal puncture. Starts with a C, cervical. Um, they could be sitting erect like this with their chin tucked down or prone with the head flexed. Um, and the puncture site for cervical is C1, C2. You're gonna use non-ionic water soluble contrast media around between nine to 15 um, analysis usually used. That again would possibly be radiologist preference or what their protocol is. They're gonna inject the contrast and it's gonna visualize the nerve roots Water soluble is easily absorbed and excreted by the kidneys, so that's why we like that. The type of injection is called an intrathecal injection, which is where contrast media is administered via a spinal puncture into the subarachnoid space. So these two things highlighted, I want you to know. The subarachnoid space is between the arachnoid and the pia matter, and it contains the cerebral spinal fluid, which is what we're usually sending for testing or injecting through. During fluoroscopy, the radiologist is gonna move the table a little bit and move the patient. So they may move them um, into a straight prone position. They usually do obliques. They may stand the patient up so that um, floral table will stand up, make sure your footboard is on. 
They might ask them to do flexion extension views. The cervical myelogram is a little scary because you put those shoulder things on. As you can see, this guy here has these white shoulder blockers and they tip the head down and the feet up. I always thought they were gonna slide off the end, but they haven't. Um, so you might see that cervicals aren't as common as lumbars, but they're gonna move the patient around and as they adjust the patient, the contrast moves into different areas of the body. For the cervical, you need the contrast to get from L3, L4 all the way up to the cervical part of the spine um, if they don't do a cisternal puncture. So um, that's why they tip them around and move them around because it moves with gravity, right? They might ask you to do a cross table spine at the end. So you would either uh, do a cross table C spine or a cross table lumbar spine. You're gonna have horizontal beams. So in the floor rooms, right, we don't have DR. Well, at least we don't right now, but so you're gonna have to get that x-ray tube from the corner out of park and bring it on over and get a grid cassette just like they have here and put it right next to them and shoot across. The CT or MRI myelogram to follow. Um, so if the patient is going to CT or MRI afterwards, make sure you coordinate time, know where they're going, when they're going. CT is a lot more often, a um, lot more common after a myelogram than MRI. Um, and then you're going to transfer the patient over either supine or semi-upright in the stretcher. Don't put them all the way upright because the contrast then gets pulled down too far. The lumbar puncture is again what one you might see, um, or it's sometimes called a spinal tap. It's going to use a hollow needle into the same space, subarachnoid space, with drawing some CSF or injecting medicine. Um, some common indications could be inflammation, of the membranes, of the brain, bleeding, um, headaches, any of the above. Some room prep, so really similar to that of a myelogram, but you're gonna use a lumbar puncture tray. Um, here's just an example of that prone positioning with the two pillows. The patient will be prone on top of those um, pillows there. Needle placement, again, is the L3, L4. The tubing that they use to measure the pressure of the CSF is called a manometer. And you'll see this um, clear tubing um, in the lumbar puncture tray when you open it. Sometimes the radiologist wants to document opening pressure and closing pressure. And they're gonna turn to you and say, document this. <laughs> so have a pen ready next to you because if you don't, that's when they're gonna ask. <laughs> um, we're gonna send for labs. Most of the lumbar punctures request samples to be sent to the lab. Make sure the orders are in um, the, the HIS, so the hospital information system. Ours is called CAS, or power chart. Um, the fluoro table might be needed to tilt head up to allow the liquid to flow into the tubing. Each tube has to be labeled one, two, three, four. Watch the caps, make sure they're screwed on tight because when you put them in that biohazard bag, you don't want everything to leak out. Uh, make sure they're tight, wear gloves during this process. Don't touch the sterile tray with your hands, but the radiologist may hand you these tubes and just watch for that. It's gonna go in a biohazard bag and you're gonna bring it to the lab again with gloves on. Um, and then wrapping up lumbar puncture, sometimes we will do them for what's called intrathecal chemotherapy. So um, this type of chemotherapy treats cancers that have entered into the CSF. And so you'll start exactly the same as a lumbar puncture. Um, and instead of drawing labs out, they're going to then take the chemotherapy and directly enter it into um, the CSF. So it's a more direct route into the subarachnoid space. For these, an oncologist um, will join us for the um, lumbar puncture procedure. But um, so that is myelogram and lumbar puncture. I will meet you back here for the next part.